On arrival as the Glasshouse Supervisor at Cambridge University Botanic Gardens, one plant I was desperate to include in the range was Victoria. I had been fascinated as a trainee by the fountain on the garden's main walk. It's modelled on the giant lily pads of the South American water lily, Victoria Amazonica. But due to space constraints, we chose to grow its smaller sister species, Victoria cruziana, the Santa Cruz water lily. Although seed is scarce, we managed to obtain some from Helsinki Botanic Gardens. That was the easy bit. Germinating the seed can be tricky, but establishing the young plants is where it gets really difficult. Germination can be greatly improved by nicking the operculum, a small lid-like structure on the seed. Seeds are then placed into jam jars of water and hung in a tank of water at 30 degrees C. Germination is quick and the initial leaf looks like a blade of grass. This is followed by two spear-shaped leaves. All leaves at this point are fully aquatic. Once roots begin to show, the seedlings are transplanted into pots of loam and I wait on tenter hooks until the first oval, water lily-like leaf breaks the surface. From this point onwards, it all gets a lot easier and the plant gets spikier and spikier with each new leaf. From seedling to small plant takes only a few months, so the Victoria is grown on an annual cycle. It's a fantastic plant, native to the open waterways of northern Argentina and Paraguay. The huge leaves grow rapidly, unravelling to nearly two metres in diameter. Each has a pronounced, upturned rim, twice notched, to allow rainwater to drain away. The underside has an intricate, vaulted rib structure to spread the load of the enormous lily pad, allowing it to float. All but the smooth upper side is ferociously spiny. But even more extraordinary is its flowering biology. On the evening of day one, the big bud opens pure white and emitting a pineapple aroma. As night falls, chemical changes in the flower cause it to heat up. The combination of colour, scent and a warm place to stay provides irresistible to night-flying scarab beetles who push their way into the cavernous central chamber to find the walls lined with starchy food parcels to feast on. The flower appears to be every beetle's dream boudoir. But at daybreak of day two, the flower closes up, trapping the scarab beetles inside. The flower loses the scent, turns pink, and changes sex to become male. When the flower opens again on the evening of day two, the beetles are covered in pollen, and they fly off to newly opened, pineapple-scented female flowers. In England, however, we have to save pollen from the male phase of the flower to pollinate the female stage. This is done using a paintbrush. With plentiful seed set from last year's display, we were able to share this with a number of gardens. We will ourselves repeat the feat and grow the Victoria from scratch again this year, so more people can discover and enjoy the extraordinary biology and beauty of this fascinating, transgender, beetle-kidnapping plant.